Okay, so today's video is gonna be all about audio quality and upping your audio game. And I really wanted to specifically focus on, let's say a budget friendly video shotgun mic versus a professional shotgun mic. Somewhere in the ballpark of, let's say $300 to about $1,000. What are you getting in that price difference? And the best way to show you guys is by doing an audio test. Let's dive in. All right, so right now you guys are listening to the Rode Wireless Go 2, arguably and probably one of the most popular wireless lavalier mic systems out there. I know that Rode just released their Wireless Pro, and of course there's a DJI mic and the Hollyland Lark Max. If you're interested in wireless lavalier mics, I did a video comparing the Rode Wireless Go 2 versus the DJI mic and the Hollyland Lark Max, and I give you guys all the details and break them down, do an audio test, a range test, you name it, and I give you my personal recommendations for where each particular system shines. But today we're not gonna talk about lavalier mics. We're gonna talk about shotgun mics. And I actually have my personal mics, the mics that I've used throughout the years, and this video is not sponsored by any company. So these are my mics, I purchased all of them, and really trying to showcase what are you getting in that price difference. So, up first. This is my Deity mic. This is the V-Mic D3 Pro. It's a shotgun mic. In general, I do want to make the statement that shotgun mics are not my first choice or the best choice for indoor audio. But that doesn't mean you can't use them. They still can shine. I think they're probably the most versatile mics period, because they can definitely be used outdoors. That's where shotgun mics really shine is outdoor use, because they're very directional. Wherever you point them, that's the audio you're gonna get. But they still can be used indoors. It just takes a little bit more effort from you. Basically, you need to make sure you soundproof your room. If you do that, and if you do that correctly, then you won't get this weird phenomena where the shotgun mic will basically have phasing. Because they're so directional, if you point them at a weird angle, and sometimes you just don't know what causes it or which angle causes it, you'll get something called phasing, where basically the reflections, the sound reflections off the room will actually, and kind of rarely, bounce back into the shotgun mic. You'll clearly hear, and there's no way to edit it, it kind of ruins your clip. But if you soundproof your room correctly, you will avoid that, and shotgun mics will still sound amazing indoors. However, if you're primarily shooting indoors, and you're not necessarily gonna see yourself shooting outdoors, then a small condenser mic like the Sennheiser MKH-50 or 8050 will be perfect for indoor usage. But if you're gonna do it all and you can only have one mic, then a shotgun mic is the way to go. And personally, I recommend a Sennheiser 416 if your budget allows it. But we'll get to the 416 in a bit. The Deity was my first serious purchase in audio quality, and the D3 is actually a great microphone. It does take a 3.5 millimeter jack, so it's something you're gonna connect directly to your camera. That has its pros and cons. You don't have to sync anything up, although it's very easy to do so later, but you don't have to sync anything up. Everything gets recorded directly to the camera. What you usually wanna do is lower the input gain as much as possible in your camera and increase the input dial or the output dial on your microphone because usually the preamps on the microphone are better than camera preamps in general and that will usually get you the best audio. Professional mics like the Sennheiser take an XLR cable and again we'll get to that in a sec but this DD is incredible. It's really a video mic but you can boom it, you can do anything you want with it and the sound quality is fantastic. Now here's the second mic. This is a Sennheiser MKH-416. This was a legendary mic that was a standard in Hollywood for many, many years. Chances are you've heard this mic a lot in all of your favorite movies. And in particular, it's not necessarily the standard anymore, but I can guarantee you any serious person out there that's doing audio for a living will still carry the 416, even if it's just a backup in their toolbox because it's just so reliable it's completely bulletproof and has very great audio quality, legendary audio quality. Actually, it's kind of built up a reputation lately for being a voiceover mic, which is crazy, but it can do it. And the best thing about the Sennheiser 416 is it's just reliable in almost all weather conditions. 
in humidity, in RF you know, interfaces or other frequency interfaces. It just shines, it stands out, and it's an old design. I think it's from the 70s. So what are you getting when you purchase a Sennheiser versus a Deity D3? Well, the Sennheiser goes for a thousand bucks. The Deity, I think now is priced around 200 bucks. I think there's a D4 now, if I'm not mistaken. But when it was brand new, I think it was around 350. That's a big price difference. Well, right off the bat, Sennheiser's built way better. You can feel the weight difference here. And that's expected, a thousand dollar difference, that's a big deal. Sennheiser's longer, like I said, for indoor usage. A small condenser mic, for example, the 8040 is like that big. So you can still get great audio quality. But generally speaking, the longer tube helps with off axis rejection and really gets you to dial in the subject's voice and eliminate background noise. But what about the audio difference? Is there a significant audio difference? There's only one way to tell. Let's boom them up and let's do an audio test. Okay, the first one up is the Deity. We have a boom just out of frame right here. And this is what the Deity sounds like. Unedited, nothing going on. All I'm doing is boosting the levels. And this is what the Deity sounds like, EQ'd. Adding compression, EQ into my specific voice to this specific microphone, and then adding things like a limiter, maybe a noise gate, whatever I gotta do to make the audio sound great. So this is what the DD sounds like. It sounds pretty fantastic. Definitely beats the onboard microphone on the Sony a7S III. So now let's try to Sennheiser. Okay, and now we have the Sennheiser 416. This is what the 416 sounds like raw. No editing, no EQs, no compression, nothing like that. Just letting you hear what it sounds like, pointed right at me, boomed right out of frame, and with the ambient noise. And this is what the 416 sounds like edited. The 416, like I've already mentioned, is an XLR input mic. It will not plug directly into your mirrorless camera unless you buy an external handle or preamp or something that will allow you to plug in XLR cabled microphones. So I have it running to my external recorder. That already gives you a huge advantage over a 3.5 millimeter only input jack shotgun mic. Like I said, the Sennheiser is a professional mic that has a reputation. It's held up its own for decades. It's not like it used to be where it was almost in every Hollywood movie. It's been replaced, but you still will find it from time to time, which is really cool but I guarantee you it's still being used as a backup even today. And because of its weather resistance and just its sheer build quality and reliability, you'll find it being pulled, especially when you're in very humid climates. But this is what the price difference gets you with the Sennheiser 416, and I think it sounds amazing. And it's by far my favorite mic. If I could only have one mic, it'd be the 416, because as long as I do my dual diligence and soundproof the room, it sounds great indoors. And I know I can take this bad boy outdoors because that's where it really shines. I'm actually working on a video that's coming out real soon where we're gonna test the 416 outside in windy conditions using just the mic by itself, putting on the muff, and then using a blimp. And just showing you guys just how it just destroys any test you throw at it because it can handle almost anything. Now doing a quick blind test, the 416 is legendary. It has a huge track record over decades. Test one, two, test one, two. This is the DD mic. The DD mic boomed away from me. And this is what the DD mic sounds like. Test one, two, three. It has a huge track record over decades. And it's still being used today in indie films, documentaries, or even in big Hollywood budgets. Test one, two, test one, two. This is the DD mic. The DD mic boomed away from me. And this is what the DD mic sounds like. Test one, two, three. So that's it for me, guys. I hope you found this video informative and hopefully I really demonstrated what you're getting when you level up to a professional mic. Not only are you getting great build quality, but the sound, at least to my ears, dramatically increases. Now, it's not to say that a budget-friendly mic like the D3, I think the D3 is fantastic, by the way, doesn't do a great job, and it does. And once you EQ it, it sounds phenomenal. But you always wanna get the best possible sound when you record. You want that raw recording to be almost perfect. It's never gonna be perfect, but you wanna to try to achieve perfection. 
And then in EQ, you're just fixing things. And the Sennheiser is perfection. Catch you guys in the next video. Take care.